Okay, millennials inherit over $40 trillion in the next 40 years. It's a lot of money. And with that $40 trillion, and one of the reasons you're here is because all your investment decisions you've made are like Sophie's Choice. Great movie made 40 years ago, uh, Merle Streep, about a woman with her two kids in a concentration camp. And she slept with the commandant of the camp to get extra food and blankets. Okay? One morning, a uh, hair, uh, hair Nazi wakes up and says, you uh, did not pleasure me enough last night, so one of your two children has to go to the gas chambers. That's the theme of the movie. And so the, she's on a dilemma. What am I doing? Which one of my kids? So the whole movie is about how she chooses the kid to go to the gas chamber. Two hours later, the, ga- the uh, concentration camp is liberated by Americans. Two hours later. She goes to America. She becomes, becomes a writer. And her and her boyfriend, they commit suicide like Cleopatra and Mark Antony. But this is not Sophie's choice. Other than the, at least one doctor I know in the audience, medical doctor, these are not life, death, shit decisions. What they are are shit decisions that you continue to procrastinate because you don't have the balls to make a decision. 76 million baby booners are, gonna, are, are around, and they're going to live to 93. Well, that's a sad fucking statistic. What have the boomers brought us? Nothing. Misery has a way of clarifying one's convictions. People come to me, they say they're inspired, and they're really they're not inspired, they're desperate. I haven't met an inspired human being in a long time. A long time. Self-confidence, nature or nurture. Is self-confidence something that you're born with, or is it taught and developed? It's a classic uh, nurture versus nature. You're not born with self-confidence. I had an alpha male, stone-fucking CIA killer for a father. You Google fuck Manny Pena. His nickname when he taught at Langley was, he taught when to shoot, which was really when to kill. Uh, His nickname was Blow Him Up. And his uh, answer to a shooting, and you hear in the movies, it was a clean shoot. It was a righteous shoot. You hear that kind of shit? My dad's answer to uh, uh, a righteous shoot is kill every motherfucker there, and it's dead man's uh, statements against yours. He was the head of the dirty tricks department in the CIA. So that's why, and all his mates, all of his buddies were stone fucking killers. So that's why I am where I am. You had a librarian. Nothing wrong with a librarian. You had a librarian for a mother. You had a a church uh, Bible-thumping gal for a mom. Worked nine jobs to put food on the... You know the stories, right? Who gives a shit? Your dad's serving two to 20 for fucking uh, rape or murder. That rung a bell with some of you. Maybe I should have said 15 to 25. So how else could you have turned out? You pissed a lot of people off. What did you do? Told them the fucking truth. My biggest speed bump, or Mount Everest, they told me when I threw my hat into the uh, political arena, is I had to make sure that they didn't shoot the messenger, but they still listened to the message. So far, that's been easy. I know when we get down to the short strokes, all these things I've said on YouTube, and I, I, I'm not going to take any of them back. I'm not like Joe, and I know Joe Rogan. I'm not going to take any shit back. You know, I said it. I meant it when I said it, and I mean it now. I met three nights ago the youngest congressman, United States congressman, uh, from uh, North Carolina, uh, 25 years old, he's in a wheelchair. And uh, he came up to us, we were having dinner in the Trump Hotel there uh, with some mentees. And he says, I know you, but uh, we watch you, yeah, yeah. And so I was asking him about uh, uh, Congress. While I'm sitting there talking to him, Donald Trump calls him on his cell phone. And he's very respectful, yes sir, yes sir. And when he gets off the call, I says, does anybody do a goddamn thing in Congress? He says, we don't even shuffle fucking papers. 
40% of Congress sleeps in their motherfucking office. 40%. Because they, can't, they don't have enough money to be able to go back to Ohio or Alabama or... I wouldn't want to go back to Alabama either, but anyway, Alabama, okay? He says, we don't even shuffle papers. He says, it's a fucking joke. Now, I'm, I'm, having, I, I'm having an orgasm. Ah, I love it. Politics has been fucked up a long, long time. It's a blood sport. I, I, I can't wait to get bloody. I'm going to bring back dueling. Okay? When I was a kid, if we had a disagreement, you step out in the parking lot, who, who's ever standing up is one. Well, in the old days, they either fenced or dueled. Okay? I'm a better shot than I am a fencer, so I'm going to bring back that. I'm also going to bring back debating. I'll eat these cocksuckers for breakfast. There's not a good orator on the planet that is in politics than I am. Not even close. They may just make me fucking emperor. No, no election whatsoever. Just make me emperor. <laughs> this is one of you. Maybe it's you. Is, is, is this from? Okay. No, no, it's not. No, 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 not me. Okay. This is a report that I have the kids send me, and his is his um, assessment of himself. Three percent out of a hundred. I'm very upset uh, at myself for not accomplishing more in life so far. Having my 18th birthday was a sobering kick in the ass. Now, how many of you at 18 were worried about the future? A couple of you in this room I know of were. Okay, this is Josh Kim, by the way. Um, kick in the ass and hit the ground running when I get back on Monday. This week was the first semi break I've had in four months, and I found it very stressing because I wasn't able to work more. No more trips or time off until I've got a net worth of one billion. Heading back as I write this, I'm very excited, blah, blah, blah. He was a multimillionaire, 17. And if you see my, my site, you, 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 I think we can show a couple pictures. Now, this has nothing to do with net worth, IQ. And in fact, for those of you that are engineers, accountants, lawyers, doctors, uh, a couple others, scientists, PhDs, you're fucked. Because you take too much time spreadsheeting the shit to death. I, the most I've ever invested in, in uh, research is between 0 0.001 microseconds and five seconds. Don't confuse me with the facts. I may be right, wrong, but I'm never right. And I may be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. I can't even remember my own shit now. Okay. <laughs> now, this was a dream of mine a long time ago. And 15 months later, 17 months later, I was there. Now, okay? Because I believed. I believed. Just like I know I'm going to be prime minister. And the first... The UK, and the first thing I'm going to do is go to war with France. <laughs> the, the English have been wanting to kick the French's ass for 200 years, okay? The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to invade Russia. Now, I'm making a little sport here, so don't get all excited, okay? And Putin says he's a black belt, but we'll see how fucking tough he is. He's about this tall, okay? Huh? Yeah, yes. Okay. Strange times are these in which we uh, live when old and young are taught falsehoods in school. And the person that dares to tell the truth is called uh, at once a lunatic and a fool. Plato's been saying this shit 500 years before Christ was born. And it hasn't changed. And it hasn't changed. Now, there's a thing on my social media right now I just posted today where one of my mentees is with his two kids getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning going running, and then they're working out, and, and the kids are saying, there's no work-life balance, Daddy. There's no work-life balance. And, uh, the, uh, but Jack Welch said it much better than I did many years ago. There's no such thing as work-life balance. There are work-life choices, and you make them, and they have consequences. There are consequences of me being gone all those 10 years when the kids were growing up. They just are. Uh, but I was willing to make that sacrifice, okay? Some of you um, aren't, and I'm not saying you should. I'm not saying uh, to abandon your, your family responsibilities. But there's only two sides of the fucking ledger. 
debits and credits. And right now, most of you are sitting on debits, not credits. Now, I didn't think this sophisticated uh, when I was a kid growing up, but it certainly makes sense. You got your dreams, hopefully. You got pessimists in your way. You got haters. You got rejection. You got your own friends. You got society. You got relatives. God loves relatives. You got just fear. You got guilt. You got your own doubt. And in some cases, you got your boss. No wonder you never get to the goal line. And each one of those is differentiated between how you were raised and how much you want to be liked more than affected. Play it safe. You should be happy with what you have. You've changed. There's a great movie in the, a great scene in the movie uh, Rudy. And it's about the kid that wanted to play football at Notre Dame, Rudy Rudiker, and he's sitting on a bus, a stop, going to catch a bus to go to Notre Dame. Actually, the, not the Notre Dame University. He had only gotten into the junior college. And there's a great scene. His father's standing over. Rudikers don't go to Notre Dame. Rudikers don't play. Blah, blah, blah. And that's what your family has done to you, either directly or indirectly. Normally, if you're a carpenter, there's nothing wrong with being a carpenter. 75% of the time, time your son's going to be a carpenter. He's going to join the same fucking union you join. Safe. How many times do you know directly or indirectly when parents, cousins, they're in the same goddamn union for 75 years, saving their relatives a job? We've gone from 6 million in unions to, I don't know, 2 million now. I'm not saying unions are wrong. Forget the fact that they were run by the mafia for 45 years. Forget that. Now, this is the sum total of what you've learned before tonight. I, I, I knew a woman many years ago. She had spent $240,000 on self-help shit. And she wasn't a rich woman. Kids are not programmed for success. I've already put forth a bunch of obvious reasons, but... Now, I happen to... I wasn't dressed like this. Our grandson is, though. I had two changes of clothes when I was growing up. Two. And my mother wouldn't let me crawl around because it would get dirty. So she held me until I could walk. That's another young fucked up, probably. But, and when I could walk, then she put me on the ground. I happened to know, knew their father. Now, they're making a movie. Will Smith is making a movie right now. And they're make, now, I'm not saying anything wrong about the guy. But the movie version of him and the version that I know are too far. I mean, something happened. Sally and I were at a funeral three or four years ago, a woman I've known 50 years, and the eulogies were all done, and so then Sally said, why don't you say something? And I said, no, nobody asked me. And then her husband, who I've known since I'm a little kid, well, get up and talk about her. So they gave me the mic, and I got up, and I'm looking at the people, and everybody's kind of sad, crying. It's hard for me to believe that we're talking, I'm about to talk about the same woman that all of you described, because that wasn't her. She was a bitch. I've known her 50 years, God rest her soul. But I mean, she's hard. And I went on and on and on. And her son is in the back going like this. You know? <laughs> and everybody, all of a sudden, yeah. She was a bitch, a hard She She uh, uh, rose to fame selling steel. She was the leading salesperson for United States Steel as a woman. She was, I'm mean, tough as nails. And they're all talking about her like she's a, a fucking saint. Well, their father wanted two world-class athletes from Torrance, okay, and they'd be down there, and Torrance is, is uh, I lived in Rolling Hills Estates. Our piss and urine and shit went down to the water supply of Torrance, okay? Our kids went to school in limos. My daughter's best friend, when she turned 16, got a fucking jet plane. So... But we drove by through Torrance. We get, get, uh, maybe we won't get mugged. Maybe we got to drive faster, faster. Okay. 